Please take your seat. We are starting. Welcome. Welcome to the Polytechnic of Turin and particularly for, from our guest uh, coming from abroad. It's, I'm Juan Carlos de Martin. I'm the co-director of the Nexus Center for Internet and Society. And it's a pleasure to welcome you here on behalf not only of the Nexus Center and the Polytechnic of Turin, but also on behalf uh, of the real organizer of this event, which is uh, the global network uh, of interdisciplinary research centers on internet and society. We have to look for a shorter name at some point. Uh, just a few words of introduction uh, regarding the topic of today. Uh, it's one of the hottest topics right now regarding the internet, internet governance. It's not a new topic because uh, we've been discussing of internet governance uh, at the very least from the beginning of this century, but it's arguably becoming much more important in recent months, particularly after a decision of the US government uh, to consider a transition of certain aspects of internet governance. So in recent months, uh, and I almost as I speak, many governments across the world are discussing among themselves, are discussing with the private sector, and discussing with academia and civil society about how to make internet governance system evolve. It's not the only topic regarding the internet, as at the same time we have at least two other major discussions going on. We are discussing about net neutrality, which is a, a huge important topic, and we are discussing of a potential magna carta of digital rights, which uh, for a long time has been advocated by um, academics uh, or leaders uh, like Tim Berners-Lee, but in the last uh, few months uh, has become something that uh, institutions across Europe have been considering con uh, very seriously. And uh, actually, I can be specific, uh, the House of Commons, uh, as uh, the Speaker of the House of Commons, uh, has appointed uh, a special commission about digital democracy and digital rights. Uh, the French Parliament uh, has appointed a study commission regarding digital rights and digital issues. Uh, the Bundestag in Germany has created a new permanent parliamentary committee on digital society. And last but not least, in Italy, the Speaker of the Italian uh, House uh, of Commons has created a research study commission regarding digital rights. So four important countries in Europe are thinking and acting in this very important space. So internet governance, net neutrality, magna carta of digital rights and other topics too. It's quite likely that 2015 is going to be a very important, perhaps even historic here for the history of the internet. So it's with great pleasure that uh, I welcome you and uh, that we start these days of activities and, and uh, reflections that uh, will start, uh, as you will hear in a second, uh, from uh, some research activity performed by the Global Network of Internet and Society Centers. But before giving the starting really to meddle and to enter in the, in the heat of the topics, uh, it's with great pleasure that I, I call to the podium my rector, Professor Marco Gilli, who has, uh, is going to, intro, to give the greetings of our institution to all of you. And also I want to thank because of the support that the Politecnico has given to this event. Thank you. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome, welcome uh, to our university, uh, the Technical University of Torino, and welcome to Torino as well. We are now in uh, our main campus of uh, the Politecnico di Torino. Uh, this is the School of Engineering. We have uh, in Torino uh, two main campuses. One is the School of Engineering. The other one is uh, our School of Architecture, which is not far from here in a beautiful building just close to the river and close to the hill. I hope that uh, if you are going to stay here for a while, you also have the chance uh, to visit uh, our campus of architecture. Uh, we are a technical university with many students. We have uh, more than 30,000 students, uh, mainly in engineering, architecture, and applied sciences. And uh, 
Our campus is quite international. Uh, most of the students are not coming from this region, from Piedmont, and almost 20% uh, uh, of them are foreigners coming from all over the world. Well, uh, we have uh, research in all the fields of uh, engineering and architecture. And uh, as a technical university, we also have a very strong connection with uh, industries. If you have a stroll in our campus just uh, close to here, you will see many companies and many industries uh, that have labs, uh, uh, research infrastructure, just inside our campus, and in which uh, we have a common work of uh, our researchers, our students, uh, and, uh, and the people coming from uh, the industry. Well, we are very pleased to host uh, this uh, symposium for many reasons, but uh, essentially because uh, you know that uh, the role of uh, universities and uh, especially the role of technical university is changing, changing very, very quickly. Uh, we are a member of uh, uh, the Conference of Technical University of Europe, the name is CESAR, and we had the presidency of this uh, network of university, and we discussed a lot in the previous two years uh, what about uh, the new mission, the new role, the new target of technical universities in the world. And uh, universities and technical universities now uh, become uh, important actors, important partners in uh, the, the system in order to address uh, and to help you know, the socio-economical system to solve complex problems. And uh, in order to do that, uh, we need uh, a more interdisciplinary approach especially in uh, engineering, you know that traditionally the education of uh, engineers was very science and technology based. This is also now, this is true also now, but more and more uh, engineers uh, need to have uh, an education which is more oriented to interdisciplinary fields. This is quite uh, uh, clear in research, if you look at the Horizon 2020 program of the EU, most of the subjects are really interdisciplinary. You need to integrate different knowledge. This is a little bit more difficult in education to integrate different disciplines, but it's absolutely clear that now for our students, especially at the level of master, we need to have a kind of education which uh, is uh, able to mix uh, technology science, social sciences, uh, and human sciences. So this uh, internet, of course, uh, is a perfect example, is a perfect example in which uh, you need uh, to integrate knowledge, and uh, is a perfect example for research, and of course it's also an example for our students. And I see that there are some of our students there. And, uh, I would say the network, uh, the important network that uh, you have uh, created, the networks of this uh, internet center, is another very good example uh, how different researchers coming uh, from uh, different fields can try not just uh, to make uh, uh, interdisciplinary research, but uh, to integrate the knowledge, which is the, the real challenge, not only for, uh, I see, for research, but it is a real challenge in order to form and to educate uh, our graduate students. So these are the reasons we are very pleased that, uh, to host this uh, symposium here. I would like, of course, uh, also to thank uh, all the organizers, of course, mainly uh, our friend uh, Juan Carlos de Martin, but also all the other people, the young people uh, that uh, contributed to organize uh, this event. You are also here in Torino, not only in the Politecnico di Torino, uh, many of you uh, maybe are in Torino for the first time, so I hope that you also have the chance and the possibility 
to visit our nice uh, city of Torino. You know that uh, our university was founded in 1859, just uh, two years before the unification of Italy, and uh, that was unified in 1861, and uh, Torino was the first capital of Italy. Then the capital was moved to Rome, but uh, originally it was Torino. So it's... Uh, uh, I hope that you also have the possibility to visit our city, to visit the center of our city. There are many nice uh, historical buildings to visit, and also it's very nice to have a stroll just, uh, just uh, uh, in the center. Well, thank you again for being here. Uh, thank you again to all the organizers and also uh, to the sponsors of this conference. Uh, and uh, I wish you a very, very fruitful day and a very, very fruitful conference. Thank you again. Thank you again to the director of the Polytechnic for uh, his kind words uh, and his uh, welcome and his uh, support for this event and for the Nexus Center in general. Now it's um, uh, with great pleasure that uh, I call to the podium not only a distinguished professor but also a great friend uh, who is going to introduce and frame the discussion of the day. Uh, the title of this presentation is going to be Framing the Research Challenge and it will explain why research is in parentheses in search of a concept of distributed and collaborative internet governance. It's with uh, great pleasure that I call to the podium Professor Urs Gasser. Good morning. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Uh, it's wonderful to be back in, in Turin uh, with so many colleagues. Um, also, welcome uh, to those who join us uh, remotely. So, I have quite the challenge uh, up here on this big stage um, to, in only a few minutes, actually frame the discussion of the day. Um, so, what I'm trying to do is more to set the stage rather than uh, to go into, into detail. Um, the problem when we talk about uh, the role of, of academia at large uh, when it comes to the evolution of the internet governance ecosystem, um, the topic of our day, starts even uh, with the term internet governance. So a few weeks ago, um, there was the Internet Governance Forum taking place in Istanbul. Many of you have attended. Um, and on the day before the um, forum started, there was an academic conference hosted by uh, Giganet, where we discussed um, for a full morning what the meaning not only of internet governance is, but also what the meaning of the word governance and the concept governance is. So the first challenge is right there, definitional issues. Um, we will see that over and over again, I think, throughout the day, that we're still struggling even with basic terms um, when it comes to internet governance conversations. Professor De Martina has already pointed out, uh, that's particularly surprising because internet governance is not a new topic as such. Obviously, there has been some sort of especially technical governance since uh, the birth uh, of the internet. Uh, and has been a lot of conversation ever since then. Um, I put down one of uh, the working definitions that may be helpful uh, today as we um, uh, take on this challenge to think about the future of internet governance. You see from this um, with this, uh, definition that internet governance uh, includes a broad range of issues and a broad uh, range of actors. But beyond that, there is actually a lot of, uh, uh, are a lot of different interpretations uh, what uh, this definition actually means and puts forward. There are, for instance, uh, arguments in academia, but also in practice, that internet governance debates should focus uh, on technical issues. There are other uh, voices um, working with a relatively broad understanding of internet governance issues. There is a question that will come back today uh, or take center stage whether uh, uh, internet governance is a, a, a distributed or decentralized uh, concept or whether um, we should think about uh, uh, um, different mechanisms. 
Now, I mentioned the IGF. If you looked at the agenda of the Internet Governance Forum, it became clear that at least um, in today's conversations, um, Internet Governance includes many different topics. Uh, I love this um, picture from our friends uh, at the Diplo Foundation, and I think Jovan is, is here today and we'll talk to you later today. That uh, is somehow a, a snapshot of the um, uh, complexity of internet governance topics and players. Uh, so you see, for instance, that internet governance, of course, deals with issues um, related to standard setting. Uh, but then you also see that jurisdictional issues are part of the picture. We have the internet and jurisdiction project here, uh, Paul, uh, who's focusing on that. And then all the way up to uh, economic questions, issues related to the digital economy, uh, are also discussed under this label, uh, internet governance. And then on top, you have cultural uh, and even uh, socio-cultural uh, issues as well. It's not only this kind of um, broad range of topics that make the um, uh, theme internet governance uh, quite complex, but it's also the number of actors. Internet governance today is a multi-actor uh, um, uh, field. Uh, you have many acronyms on, on the, your left side, so ICANN, of course, uh, is a key player. Uh, we have many others, the ITU, ISOC, and, and many others uh, play a key role. So you see it's a complex picture. Uh, it's also, uh, in some sense, uh, uh, a bit a messy uh, picture. Uh, and one thing is clear, the, uh, the current uh, question about uh, how this model that I just sketched, it actually goes back and has a lot to do and reflects um, the core values based on which the internet was built. Um, the stakes are high in, with respect to how to uh, move that current ecosystem um, uh, to a next iteration, to a next generation. Uh, the stakes are high, of course, for political reasons, for geopolitical reasons too. Uh, the model that you've just seen represented by this wonderful chart, uh, uh, of course, uh, immediately uh, raises all sorts of, of questions um, regarding conflicting interests. Um, within a nation state, but then also, of course, more importantly, across um, uh, different governments. Um, there is information is a key resource of our time, so who's in control at these various levels uh, of information flows, that's a, a, a very important, of course, political question. That makes the conversation about in what directions to move uh, as we want to improve our governance models a, a very heated debate as um, Juan Carlos already mentioned. Simplifying, there are two uh, possible directions where to um, go. One is uh, to continue with the current multi-stakeholder model as described, but to improve it, to make it better. So that's an evolutionary approach. Uh, the alternative would be to, to um, more strongly involve governments and more strongly also work uh, with multilateral uh, approaches. And we will come back to all of these topics uh, throughout the day. I just wanted to give you uh, uh, some, some uh, baseline uh, um, reference points. Now, as I said, this is a very heated debate. It's a complex and complicated debate. You see that even if you take a quick look at the agenda, uh, the different forums and actors over the past uh, two years from ICANN to ITU, Business Review and many other panels. So there are lots of conversations at different uh, places um, taking place. I will pick two conversations out of this chart that are particularly relevant as placeholders uh, for the framing of the day. As you can take from the program, our focus today is on the question of what does it mean to build a distributed and collaborative internet governance ecosystem. That's kind of the framing topic of the day. And this question or this idea or concept um, has been uh, coming up uh, a number of times and most recently um, in the context of two events and two reports. The first one is the Net Mundial meeting. I assume uh, all of you, uh, of course, have uh, heard uh, about uh, this meeting in Sao Paulo that took place earlier this year. 
the main um, goal of Net Mundial of the conference was uh, to agree through rough consensus on a set of internet governance principles that could guide and help us um, to uh, develop this next generation internet ecosystem and set the roadmap. So that was the, the main goal. Uh, this was achieved through a, a very innovative um, bottom-up process including the work of the committees. We will hear more about that on the panel today. It was a very open, transparent, participatory process, uh, a real process innovation. So this Net Mundial meeting um, has resulted in, in two documents, or in one document, but in, in two uh, outcomes. One, a set of principles and a roadmap. And I just mentioned that again as a reference point. The roadmap I, I mentioned particularly because on the issues that need further um, consideration and discussion, you can see a uh, multi-stakeholder environment and enhanced uh, cooperation and capacity building. These are two points on the agenda, and I will come from there to research, um, that uh, are flagged as, as areas where future uh, uh, more work uh, and collaboration is needed. Uh, by all stakeholders working together. So keep that in mind um, for, for the next few minutes and throughout the day. So there is, there is a, a placeholder there. Now what does that mean? Um, the challenge of course is Net Mundial for, sets forth a number of, of key principles, almost design principles, right, for, for the next generation of internet um, governance um, ecosystem. Um, but how do we implement these principles? There is a lot of the debate going on, what that means, uh, how do we engineer such an ecosystem, what are the mechanisms required. One group that I want to again, by way of example, highlight is uh, a panel that was chaired by President Ilves, the panel on global internet cooperation and governance mechanisms, that essentially took the Net Mundial principles, or what that was at least inspired by the Net Mundial principles, um, and uh, created a more granular view and, and roadmap uh, for the future evolution uh, of global internet cooperation and the governance ecosystem. You have the uh, link to the report here. This panel uh, brought together a group uh, of global stakeholders uh, from government, uh, civil society, academia, private sector, um, international organizations, technical community and the like, um, to, to really uh, make progress on, on this implementation question. This is my favorite chart uh, from the report uh, by the panel, which um, I think gives us a, a sense of, of the kinds of uh, implementation approaches the panel had in mind here. Uh, this is a snapshot that illustrates um, how actually collaborative and decentralized internet governance problem solving could look like uh, through a mechanism uh, that we'll hear more about uh, today. At the core, um, the distributed uh, 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 governance groups um, uh, and the question that we will address uh, today during uh, certainly the second panel is, well, what does that mean? What are distributed governance groups? So I mentioned this um, also, this particular uh, panel report, because if you take two steps back, you can look at it as an attempt to sketch a internet governance system top down. It's like a design sketch, starting with Net Mundial principles, thinking about the implementation. So it's an engineering approach in a certain sense, being here at the Polytechnico. And the first panel right after this will discuss what is the promise of such a top-down conceptual approach to drafting or, or designing uh, uh, internet governance systems? What are the limits of such an approach? So that's the first panel. This chart is also interesting because it shows by way of example and as a placeholder where research may be helpful. If you go through the ILFES panel report, there are lots of concepts uh, and hypotheses um, and need for tools that are mentioned that actually need further research. And so one of the challenges we've been working on as a pilot, again, as just a proof of concept through the global network uh, of internet and society centers is on 
uh, the question of um, internet, uh, distributed um, internet governance groups. So just uh, uh, Juan Carlos introduced it, the network of centers brings together uh, NEXA, importantly here, uh, with uh, 29 other centers uh, across the world, one third from the global south, working on a broad range of internet and society issues, but for today the relevant piece is our, our current work on internet governance. So the task, what we've been working on, uh, is as a pilot to flesh out what are uh, distributed governance groups. Remember the question that I flagged before. And the approach we've taken is to look at existing examples within uh, the sphere of internet governance, but also outside, and country experiences um, to better understand how does distributed governance making work in practice and what can we learn from it how can we link that back uh, to these kind of more top-down uh, conceptual uh, approaches that we outlined? The mechanism and the output is a series of 12 case studies. We have a first round of drafts uh, presented today in part. We had a discussion yesterday here in Turin, a working meeting about these drafts. We'll have a second set. You see it's a broad range of, of topics. Uh, again, we will hear about um, those first case studies from the authors themselves on the second panel today. So this is just kind of, again, a reference point for you to contextualize what you will hear um, about from, from the panelists later today. We not only engage in uh, case studies, but we also hope to actually synthesize the case studies and, and, and distill some of the key lessons learned, or at least observations, into a synthesis paper, into a synthesis report, which will be released um, and published later uh, this year. In parallel, we are working also with our colla uh, collaborators, um, including the Gov Lab, uh, but also the Global Commission on Internet Governance, and the Research Advisory Network uh, on a longer-term research agenda. So all of this is to say um, it's an interesting moment in time, right? You have this big global debate with very high st stakes about the future of Internet governance, but at the same time, this conversation also opens up all sorts of empirical questions, of analytical questions, of uh, normative questions where research can uh, play a key role. What we are doing here, and what we will um, touch upon, of course, throughout the day, uh, are, are just kind of examples, of course, uh, um, uh, featuring some of the uh, research efforts on the way. The main point I would like to make, though, is this is just the beginning. I hope towards the end of the day, uh, during the last panel, when we will revisit, revisit the question that I would like to formulate here, is, is there need for a, a, a more strategic approach um, to the role of academia in the debates about the future of internet governance. Such an enhanced role of academia would not only focus on the research, which is our current uh, effort, but also importantly focus on education uh, and facilitation. I would like to argue as a provocation that the framing, as we see it today, of academia as one stakeholder in internet governance debates is a shortcut and is, is not, is not uh, uh, the full role that academia can play because I would argue that independent research, uh, education and facilitation is a core resource uh, that um, serves all uh, other stakeholders uh, as well. So that's uh, the question that I hope we can revisit um, during the last panel. Here are uh, a few suggested areas uh, of, of academic activity. Uh, I want to highlight experimentation. We will hear later uh, in the afternoon from, from a number of initiatives, including Golf Lab, um, Stefan sitting somewhere, um, but also from Bill Drake and the idea of a clearinghouse. So you will see different concrete proposals that uh, academics, uh, academic centers um, can contribute as we engineer and then also implement um, the next internet governance ecosystem. So that's the introduction and framing. I hope you have enough reference points. Uh, some of it is quite abstract right now, 
but uh, I trust that you will make the mental links uh, throughout the day as the panels will pick up on uh, these topics either on the uh, you know, kind of more conceptual uh, um, uh, reference points around Net Mundial, or then also later in the day when we talk about case studies, best practices, clearing houses, issues to solution mapping tools, and the like. Thank you very much to the hosts.